chief guest this morning is excellency ranjan loni the ambassador of italy to india guest of honor ms krishna mukopadhyay dr sabert ms alexandra dr sanjay gupta all the deans of various schools distinguished guests speakers delegates students good morning to everyone and hearty welcome to gd bank university I don't be wrong if I say I am one of those few in this hall who have nothing to do with design and lighting. And therefore, uh, many of you may be surprised that why I have put my thoughts in the form of presentation. There are two reasons for that. One, that I was struggling to put my thoughts in a coherent manner, and I didn't find any other way except putting it on the slides. And second. I thought I'll not get into the hardcore technicalities of the subject to escape from the audience, and therefore uh, I discussed with Dr. Sanjay Gupta yesterday, and he, uh, in a very taunting manner, said that, uh, "Sir, if you could uh, uh, speak the way you spoke in the engineering conference, and how dare I not uh, listen to him?" Particularly when it becomes a comparison between one dean and another dean, one school and another dean, uh, school uh, dean, and therefore uh, try to put together thoughts which I had learned. But believe me, as his lighting is concerned, I only learned one lesson when I was a student of finance, and we used to learn life cycle costing. And in that, we used to discuss an example that how compared to traditional lighting systems, the most modern or technologically advanced systems. Uh, become cost effective if you consider them for the life cycle and not within the accounting period, first or second year. And after that, I had no contact with lighting as a profession. But when he uh, came to the university, this one and the previous one where we had a school of design, I started looking at more and more uh, design as a concept. And lighting, of course, still remains very, very uh, uh, specific and very specialized field for me. So what I'll do, uh, I'll take uh, three perspectives when I talk about lighting, and these perspectives uh, I should not be uh, misunderstood. Are the perspectives of a layman, of a bystander, and not an expert, and therefore uh, take it in that sense and not get into the high, high, uh, technical issues on lighting. First uh, perspective I thought would be uh, relevant. Uh, for me to speak in the historical perspective the second one is socio economic or demographic and the third one is technology historical perspective if you look at uh, i could peep into the archives of this magazine strand and this is a very old magazine started in the uk and then closed down in between um, 1891 to 1930, it was on its monthly magazine, and after exactly 711 issues, it stopped. It went off the shelf. It was revived again in 1998 in U.S. Michigan state, and now is a quarterly magazine. This magazine cited in 1892 two things. One was appearance of Sherlock Holmes story, The Adventure of Silver Grays. And the second one was an advertisement which said that electrical bulbs are competing with the gas lighting system. 1892. And I was wondering uh, that a person like me who saw electricity for the first time in 1981 in my village, before that we didn't have access to electricity, I had not seen how it looks like. What's electrical lighting? And the world was talking in 1892. And that gave me some perspective that how lighting, as a discipline or as a technology, has evolved. Till 1900, electricity was 25 times more expensive per unit of energy than gas, but only seven times more efficient. And therefore, it kept away the competition for quite some time. By 1930, there is another 30 years. Electricity was only five times expensive, but ten times more efficient, and this is where electric lighting really took on the gas lighting system. 
Continuing with this perspective, electric lighting would displace gas almost completely by the mid 20th century, that was last century. The transition from gas to electricity marked one stage in the availability of artificial light over the last few hundred years, which has transformed the way we live. If you look at this uh, history of about 120 years from the time I started, today, I don't think many of the people of new generation in this hall would have seen an era where there was no electricity in this country. Maybe people of my uh, generation or slightly elder would know what it really meant. According to this research by Pitt and Pearson in 2007, changing in technologies have always been accompanied by increasing use of light. Measured in human hours, which consumption of lighting in UK increasing by a factor of 100,000 in about 300 years, that is 1700 to 2000. And this is a phenomenal growth by any yardstick. Some socio-economic facts will bring my perspective on uh, the demographics or the socio-economic factors which I mentioned which have a bearing on lighting design in specific and generally design. 65% which is about 75 millions of India's population is in the working age right now. By 2050, average age will be 29 years compared to 37 in China and 48 in Japan. By the same year, 45% of India's population will be living in urban areas. India will have, by 2025, India will have 25% of the workforce. Now this is a very significant uh, uh, demographic information because when you urbanize, the demand for lighting systems increases. I can cite one parallel is of uh, a watch. Watch maybe 40-50 years ago used to be a necessity but today it's a fashion accessory. Today we don't put on watch just to look at the time. It's as I said a fashion accessory, it's, in, it's a designer item. Something similar has happened to lighting when we move from rural area to urban area and this urbanization, the trend of urbanization is likely to increase as we go into the future. Another significant uh, information is something which leads to demand is the India GDP which is about $2400 billion as in today, maybe slightly more than this, between $2400 to $2500 It's been growing at the rate of 16 to 17% in the last six years. But most significant is the per capita GDP which uh, is doubling almost every 9 to 10 years. When we were students, uh, or maybe 70s and 80s, this was doubling every 34 to 35 years. But doubling of per capita GDP in about 9 to 10 years puts a tremendous pressure on demand. And then, then subsequent supply side has to really move faster to fulfill the demand. And overall, if you look at all these factors, there is an increasing propensity to spend on lifestyle. And that's another factor which is leading to increasing demand of uh, designer items in general, but uh, design lighting in particular. The third perspective is of the technological revolutions. And in that, uh, I quickly recap the three industrial revolutions which I have witnessed. The first one, and in, uh, in each revolution, I have looked at the means of communication and the sources of energy. They define a particular revolution. Uh, post and telegraph coupled with steam energy was the first one. Second one was the telephones and fossil fuels, which are now being discussed all the world that are depleting uh, sources of fossil fuels and we are moving towards more sustainable sources of energy. And the third one is internet plus green energy. So we are already entering, rather entered the era of green energy and where the means of communication is internet, where almost everything is networked with other things. And in this third industrial revolution, which has already started, new technologies, sustainability and economic development shifting to rural areas where lighting is more deficient. If you compare rural with urban areas, the need for lighting is much more in the rural uh, India particularly and rural areas of all the other countries of the developing world. 
and therefore the focus you will find increasingly will shift uh, to rural areas as far as lighting services are concerned. Coming to lighting in retail, uh, I have tried to uh, put some perspectives purely from economics and finance point of view rather than lighting point of view. If you look at urbanization going up or expanding, one of the logical outcome of this will be that retail as an industry will expand. And that's what we have witnessed in the last uh, decade or so, particularly in India. Transition to greater LED inclusion is inevitable. Now, but there is a word of caution. Retail isn't like office or commercial projects. Here, the lighting has to be decided as per the need. Uh, each retail store may not be uh, going for a uniform lighting system. You may not only look at uh, LED, maybe there are other types of lighting systems which are more appropriate in the context of a retail. And second thing, taking cue from what Dr. Sanjay Gupta said, uh, increasingly there will be a competition between online retailing and retailing in brick and mortar system. The experience which he was talking about will perhaps distinguish between online retail and uh, retailing in real sense. So manufacturers have to realize that the markets need a high light output at energy consumption. Level below existing technology will rate a sensible ROI. So the financials or the cost benefit analysis are something we have to uh, always keep in mind. Uh, another uh, uh, factor I read was that uh, in recent times when retail is, uh, I'll not be wrong if I say in Indian context is not a very well developed industry. It is still developing, still growing. The life of a retail store sometimes is not very long. And therefore, if you go for a lighting system which has a longer life, it goes waste. The whole calculation of life and costing system uh, gets disturbed. And another reason why we may not go blindly behind the LED lighting system. If in 2012, an example of retail is that a state of the art retail showcase had 2% LEDs as a main lighting source, it will be just reverse. <coughs> of that for a mall opening in 2015. So in about three years flat, it's changing from 2% to perhaps more than 90%. Uh, we had some stunning discussion before we walked in, Papa, they were sharing that how in India there's the past all expectations or predictions in terms of sales from LED lighting systems and films. Today's LED lighting is six or seven times more efficient than conventional lighting and can last up to 25 times longer. LED lighting will comprise 75% of all lighting sales by the year 2030. This is whole of US. Uh, how far this is going to be correct, I do not know, but these predictions were by Ener uh, US Energy uh, Department. Switching entirely to LED lights over the next two decades could save 250 billion US dollars in energy costs, this is for the United States of America, reduce electricity consumption for lighting by nearly 50% and avoid 1800 million metric tons of carbon emissions. These are the calculations only for the, the US. Now, uh, Based on these three perspectives, what I could call out uh, mainly three reasons for growing demand of lighting services uh, in the coming decades. First is that interior light levels are still well below the intensity of daylight by as much as one or two orders of magnitude. And this particularly happens in the, the winter season. And looking at the, the psychology of human beings, there is no way we can stop them anywhere less than the daylight system. It means till the time it matches with the daylight system, it will keep on growing. And therefore, in foreseeable future, lighting services will have greater and greater demand. And the second reason that every major technological shift has led to more demand or more consumption of light. This is primarily because of two elasticities of demand. One is uh, the price elasticity and another one is the income elasticity. As a purely economic uh, subject, we can keep on calculating, but the combined effect of these two elasticities has led to uh, increased demand and consumption of lighting services, also known as a uh, 
a rebound effect in, in economics. And the third one, incomes will continue to rise the need to increase in demand. From different sources, there are major life to trends in 2015 and beyond. LED lighting, we already mentioned, will be increasing. Pendant lighting, thanks to uh, retail growth. Chandeliers is purely a uh, fashion or I would say a luxury kind of uh, lighting accessory. Uh, it could be small ones and the huge uh, grand chandeliers will be more and more in demand. Lighting inside drawers and cabinets. Uh, the mankind refuses to now suffer from a uh, dim light inside the cabinets and the, the drawers. And that's another area where you'll find more and more innovation taking place. Lighting in the shower, again matter of luxury. Wireless lighting and security control systems, and this is also becoming more and more wireless when you look at the home security systems. Copper colored light fixtures, again designer lights. These are some of the, the trends which are likely to dominate uh, the demand for uh, lighting services in times to come. Quickly summarizing what I have said so far uh, over the next one and a half to two decades, uh, technology remains at the core and these four trends basically will drive the market of, uh, for lighting. One is increasing urbanization which I pointed out earlier, expanding retail industry and demand for lighting services. Increasing incomes will lead to increased spending on lighting and more demand. Third industrial revolution which has uh, raised the issues of sustainability and correctness more than ever before and the technology to fuel innovation or imagination and the human generity of youth and youth is something which uh, uh, forms a major part of demographics uh, in countries like India. Efficient technology is the fourth trend. New product development will be there with focus on uh, sustainability. So I think, uh, uh, as I said uh, in the beginning, for me as a layman, as a user of lighting services, as a consumer of lighting services, and someone who looks at uh, educational trends, for me the real interest is that in what direction this industry is going to move and what are the uh, areas for us as an academic institution and the university to really focus on as we move into the future. And anything we do at the university will have to keep an eye on what the industry trends are. The trends are very clear. Uh, Dr. Gupta mentioned about uh, space light sports and lighting. Uh, in the last 20 years, what I have seen in India, anything new emerges. Everybody says there is demand for this. But when you launch a program, there are no subscribers to that. And therefore, the correct strategy is to start the space light mission in a manner, something like this conference, maybe offer an elective in the existing programs, offer a minor and a major specialization, and by the time market gets matured, you can always go for a full-fledged program, and therefore I see still some time left. It may be five years, it may be ten years, before India can afford a full-time degree program in lighting. Till then, we have to continue only and only with uh, minor and major specializations at the most with very few takers because this is a highly specialized field. And therefore, a very broad area of design is something which is already evolved, which is predominant now. It's almost cutting across all of the disciplines. And this being a highly specialized field will still take some time to have uh, full-time uh, degrees and diplomas. Uh, I, I'll stop my uh, uh, gyan of a non-expert. And therefore, uh, and let me also come to more of uh, formalities and uh, my duties, which uh, I think I have to fulfill. Uh, I welcome once again uh, His Excellency for sparing his time to be with us. I think uh, he joining us this morning has led greater credibility to this conference, the efforts which have been put in for the last six to seven months. Uh, Mr. Hebert has been here, we have been talking uh, off and on in between when I find time. And uh, to be very frank with you, uh, after interacting with her, uh, my knowledge of this field has gone on maybe one or one and a half percent more than what it used to be. It was almost zero earlier, so this is the only knowledge I have. And uh, a guest of honor, uh, Madam Mukhopadhyay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Nan, for being with us. Uh, Ms. Asinda, uh, second visit to the campus, she was here some time back. Uh, it only indicates uh, your presence, both of you being present here, that our relationship with Italy and Port of Milan 
has grown from strength to strength and it's likely to grow even stronger as we move into the future. Thank you very much and welcome once again.